Who's ready for some fall reads? Hello everybody, today I am sharing with you some of my favorite fall reads. Now you all know I'm a very seasonal person, as you tell by my background. I change it primarily during like the fall, Halloween, and Christmas months, so that's just what I like to do. Fall is probably one of my most favorite backgrounds next to Christmas, but I love doing seasonal recommendations videos because as I said, I'm a seasonal person, I'm a seasonal reader, I'm a seasonal music listener, I'm a seasonal TV watcher, decor, fashion, whatever. I'm just very seasonal. So with reading for seasonal stuff, especially for fall, I tend to read a lot of darker things during the fall months. By that I mean kind of a lot of thrillers, especially during October, a lot of kind of a little bit of fantasy that's kind of darker, just a lot of things like that. So that's one I recommend to you today, very atmospheric atmosphere kind of spooky type of reads. I am going to do another favorite thrillers video next month so in case you're interested in that stay tuned. No thrillers will be featured in this video. I'm going to save that for next month because as always I love thrillers and there's some new ones I want to recommend to you but this video is going to be strictly for like kind of fall atmospheric reads that I think are perfect to read during the autumn months mainly September, October, and November. First up is one of my favorite books of all time and that is Saul Kill Girls by Claire Legrand. I read this last year and I fell in love with it. It is the perfect perfect time to read it during the season because it is very dark, very atmospheric, very spooky. So basically in this book we have this island called Sawkill Island. A lot of girls go missing on this island. No one knows where they've gone. They kind of just chalk it up to like a monster even. And in this book we follow three main characters. One is a newcomer to the island and she kind of shakes things up. One is the sheriff's daughter who's trying to investigate things. And one is in the thick of it and she's maybe the part of the evil things. Okay, so we follow these three characters and they somehow get rooted to each other and it's just you figure out where these girls are going missing and what exactly is happening to them and it is a very creepy read. There were several times in this book where I was like wow this is this is eerie and I'm a very chicken reader just so you know but I love this book would highly recommend it. It is perfect for spooky months. I, this book is underrated in my opinion not a lot of people talk about it but I loved it so deeply much and it is perfect perfect to read for the fall months. Next up is a book I think I recommended last year for fall read but I will continue to do so because it is one of the perfect fall reads and that is The Wicked Deep by Shea Earnshaw. In this book we have another kind of town where it's known for um witches pretty much so every summer for two weeks at a time these three sisters come back. They were persecuted as witches in like the 1800s basically. The town people accused them as being witches, tied rocks to their feet and threw them in the river. So every summer for two weeks they come back and they inhabit the bodies of three girls that are in town. They lure young teenage boys out to their death in the water. This book we follow a character named Penny who has lived in this town forever. Like people come to this town every summer just to see this. I forget what exactly it's called. The town is called Sparrow but they have this whole festival thing like people travel across the country for this and Penny gets in the thick of it this summer and it gets really intense. I think this is perfect to read because it's about witches. It's about, you know, kind of a curse upon a town, kind of like witches inhabiting a body. I loved it so much. It's very much an atmospheric read. It will definitely get you in the fall mood because it's like always oh, talking about fog and just a creepy small town setting, which I adored. I highly recommend this for the fall months for sure. Another book series I always seem to recommend for fall months is Three Dark Crowns by Kendra Arbor. Like, this is a four book series. The fourth one just came out. I just finished it and it's a darker YA fantasy book but when I think you think of fantasy like myself I get kind of steering away because I'm not very much into the really in-depth very thick fantasies. This one is a very easy fantasy to read. In this fantasy series we follow three sisters who were separated at a very young age. They are all the queen's daughters and they're separated at a young age because when they are 16 they get reunited and they have to kind of fight for the death and whoever's gonna be left standing will be the queen. Now each of these sisters have a different gift. One is a poisoner so she can ingest any poisons and no harm will come from her. One is a naturalist where she can do a lot with trees and animals. The other one is an elemental who can, you know, elements, lightning, fire, all those things. And basically we follow these three sisters and their course of life and when they meet up at 16 again to see what's going to happen. It is a very easy fantasy read. It almost reads a little bit even like a contemporary in my opinion, which is probably why I love it so much because it's easy to read. But it's still got that dark tone of the fantasy because you talk about poison and these powers and stuff like that. And I really enjoy the series. I mean, if the cover doesn't scream fall alone, the whole summary of the book is definitely 
definitely very fallish. Next up, we have another new favorite, and that is The Devouring Gray by Kristen Lynn Herman. This one is about, you guessed it, a town. That seems to be the trend with a lot of fall reads, in my opinion. It's always about this really small but eerie town, and something's going awry in it, and you can't quite figure it out. Most likely, it's supernatural. I saw this town called Four Paths, and there's this monster that's kind of there, but not there. It's being trapped in, like, another realm of Four Paths. It's very hard to explain, so just bear with me. We have a new character coming into this town named Violet. Now, her family, like her old generational family, has lived in Four Pass, even helped founded it and everything like that, but her mom is finally moving back home to Four Pass. We also, um, we also cross paths and follow with other characters that are kind of rooted in Four Pass. So Justin, we have Harper, and we have, I think, another character. Now, all of their families helped founded Four Pass, and it means that all of them have powers because the Four Pass family the four past founding families, I guess you could say, um, were all inhabited with powers to help kind of control this monster. So this book is very much rooted in like allies. Like we have five different families that helped form this town, but like one family is allied with another family, but the other family won't talk to another family and things like that. And basically all these characters have to come together to learn more about this monster, figure out what's going on in four past. And I just really enjoyed it. This is one that not a lot of people like, but I really liked it. It reminds me a lot of of Riverdale with a mixture of Stranger Things and The Vampire Diaries. All of those combined I think is this book in my opinion. Like this needs to be a CW show. I've said it time and time again. CW where you at you need to pick this up because this could be your next big hit. Um, but I liked it. It was dark. It was eerie. It's got you know some angsty love and things like that but it's got the paranormal aspect as well which I think is great especially for a CW show. So I enjoyed it a ton and would highly recommend it for the spooky months because it was definitely a spooky read. Another series that I adore and will always recommend for fall is The Raven Cycle by Maggie Stiefvater. So this is another four book series and this one's very much paranormal I would say mostly. We follow um, a lot of characters. We follow Blue um, a lot and she her family is a tarot card family. They can read a lot of tarot cards, future palm readings and all that stuff. And she encounters the Raven Boys. And Raven Boys are a set of four boys and they go to the school and they are trying to search for this dead king in a ley line. It sounds very confusing and it is. The first half of this book, I've said time and time again, is rough to get through. Like the first 100 pages took me forever to read. But once you get over that hump, the book starts to get interesting. You start to piece things together and by book four you're just like, I need to know all of it right now. So what I would say to try to draw you into this book is that it is rooted a lot in paranormal. So this gang looking for a dead king that is like beneath the ley lines and so do a lot of research of ley lines. There's a lot of like ghost activity in this. There's a lot of like um, dream things happening as well. There's also a curse that if Blue kisses her true love, he will die. It's just, it's a lot of paranormal aspects into it. And all is kind of muddled at first in the first book, but it starts to make sense as the series goes on. Trust me, I know it's hard to get through the first book, but I love this series, and whenever I think of fall, I automatically think of The Raven Cycle. Next up, we have Wicked Saints by Emily A. Duncan. Look at this. This is just Screams Fall. This book is also hard to explain. I find that some of my favorite books, I just have the worst time in explaining. I'm like, it's about this, 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 and this, and people are like, okay, I don't understand it. Trust me, neither do I, but the book was great. But this in this book, we have these two countries, I will say, that are at war with each other. The reason is, is because one really covets blood magic and the other one kind of steers away from it and think it's kind of heresy and things like that. And we have two characters and like I said, each one of them live in, lives in the country. We have one girl that is a cleric and it means that she can talk directly to all of these different gods. Like she wears this bracelet and she can rub over like one stone that represents a god and the, dog, and the god could directly talk to her. So she is very revered in her country, which means in another country she's also highly sought after to be killed. And we have another character who's like the prince of the other country. I would tell you the country names, but they're hard to pronounce as well as the character names, just so you know. And he's on the hunt for this cleric because they use blood magic and they what they do with their blood magic is they have a spell book like tied to their hip. They rip open a page that they want to do a spell in and they dunk their page into their blood. Like they cut open themselves and they and that's how they do blood magic. And so they're basically out to kill everybody that's in the other country. Does that make sense? This one reminds me a lot of fall because of the magic systems and it's just kind of a dark book. They have two different countries that believe in different magic systems and they're at war with each other and with the blood magic it's especially dark which I think makes for a good fall read. Like I said this book is hard to explain. You're probably like what the heck. When you get into it it gets really good and I enjoy it. Is this going to be a series? I don't know how many books so I'm sorry to tell you that but either way I definitely plan to continue on with the series and again like doesn't that look spooky as mess? 
It definitely does. Okay, so the last two books I want to share with you are venturing really off the spooky path, and they just scream autumn to me, not only for their covers of what they're about, but also I haven't read them yet, so I feel bad for recommending them, but I still think they are going to be great fall reads. I'm planning to read them very soon, um, but yeah, I think they're just great fall reads. The first one up is a book I bought because I saw the cover and I was like, I, I, I need to have that in my life. Who else has done that before? That is The Bake Shop at Pumpkin and Spice. If this book does not scream fall, I don't know what else does. I mean, we have a bakery full of like pumpkin cookies, leaf cookies, pumpkin pies, like autumn everything, autumn colors. Like this is like, this book cover was made for me because I'm a fall addict. Um, this is by Donna Kaufman and Kate Engel. This, I think it says, witches, goblins, and the occasional ghosts are all sure to be spotted at the annual Halloween parade and Moonbright's favorite holiday. Between good-natured Halloween tricks, frothy pumpkin lattes, and some special baked goods, the three Moonbright residents looking for love, whether they know it or not, the spookiest thing will be how magical romance can suddenly be. So I think this is like three short stories in one about different love and it's just set during the fall months at like a fall bakery. Like, this book was probably made for me. Do I expect amazing things out of it? Probably not, because I do like these books, but they don't give me a lot of oomph, but if it's seasonal and it's about a bakery, like I'm there, so this is fall galore. I found this at Target, in case you're wondering. The other one I say is definitely a fall read is Pumpkin Heads by Ramble Roll. So this is her new graphic novel that just came out. Faith Erin Hicks, um, I think, did the art for it, but I know it's about these two characters and they are like best friends and they see each other in a good chunk of the year because they work at their family's pumpkin patch. But then they go back to their own states and they live their lives. And this is the last year they themselves will be at the pumpkin patch because I think they're graduating high school and going off their own ways. So it's about their last season at the pumpkin patch and what mischief they can get into. But I mean, the title alone, very fallish. The cover alone, I mean, this is like corn maze, the kettle, corn kettle, the petting zoo. Of Pappy's Apples. I mean, like, this is made for the fall, people. I mean, the art alone, it's just told in a pumpkin pack. This is the perfect fall read. You can bet I'm definitely reading it this fall for sure. So, there you have it. Those are some recommendations I think that are perfect to read during the autumn months. Whether it be spooky or really sweet with this fall bakery, you take your pick. But those are some books that I really love to read during, or type of books I like to read during the fall months. Like, the spookier, the eerie towns, the pumpkin patches like I'm there for a thousand percent. Am I a basic B? Yes, but it's okay. I embrace it. If you have any fall books that you would like to recommend to me, please let me know because I'm always on the lookout for more because I want to live my best seasonal life. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye.